Big fella can shoot it a little bit, a little off track on that one. Almonese, ankle breakers on the baseline. Forrest thought about it, the shot fake, and he'll draw some contact. Foul is on the floor, the first foul of the game. John, let's get your keys to the game tonight. Well, I tell you what, Appalachian State, they've got to make some threes early. they got to defend without fouling. They're playing a Charlotte team that's got 85% team free throw percentage. Charlotte, they got to score in the paint. 29% on three-point shooting, so they got to get it inside early to loosen up that Appalachian defense. And then they got to limit their turnovers. The Appalachian Mountaineers have been looking incredible in transition thus this year. Forrest thought about it from three. You'll pull it back out. Shot clock to 10 now for Appalachian State. Gregory up and under. He's got the first four points for the Mountaineers. They're going to need a big game out of him. He's one of the few slashers that they have on their roster, Kendall, and he just showed it right there, finishing strong with the left hand. Young, give and go, a turnover. Was it off the Mountaineers? No. Charlotte just throws it out of bounds. Jameer Young, team leader in points, rebounds, and assists with the first turnover of the game for the Charlotte 49ers. I tell you what, kid out of the math that we've seen, this is the third year we've seen him, Kendall, and he's gotten bigger and stronger, and he's the leader of that team. Michael Almonese gives way to Adrian Delph. Delph had 19 points Friday night in the Mountaineers' big win against ETSU, a quality opponent out of the Southern Conference. He'll catch and shoot from three. How about this 7-0 start for Appalachian State? Well, they're being patient on offense. They're probing it around the perimeter, and uh, they've got to make threes early to loosen that pack line defense up. They're off to a good start. Glide trap with the basketball. Several transfers in the starting lineup for Charlotte. Ron Sanchez's group. Ali Khalifa, the size advantage over James Lewis. Bucket and the foul. And that's what I'm talking about, Kendall. This is one of the few advantages that Charlotte has on the Appalachian State Mountaineers. Khalif Khalifa is a load inside at 6'11", 230. James Lewis Jr. is a big guy himself, but he's given up three inches. So this is an advantage that I think the uh, uh, 49ers have got it go to and go to a lot early. Ali Khalifa, a chance to complete a three-point play. Can't get the bounce off the back of the rim. This is a guy that was actually eight of nine from the charity stripe coming in. Really shoots it well from the foul line for a big fella. Almonese, the step back J. Rebound pulled off by Clyde Trapp. Trapp started 24 games at Clemson, an ACC transfer for Charlotte. Butler loves to drive right side. Blocked out of bounds. He thought he was bumped, no whistle. I didn't see a foul there. That's a pretty good call by the official. I like the fact that they're letting him play early too. Adrian Delph, our player to watch tonight. 40% from three, John. He knocked down his first attempt already in this one. Here's a kid that's worked hard in the offseason. Good shooter last year. He's turned into a great shooter this year. Fly trap. Give and go. Khalifa finds an open butler from distance. And the weak side board from Justin Forrest. Senior from Decatur has struggled offensively, but a nice pass here. And pinned against the glass from Khalifa. What a defensive play by Ali Khalifa. He's a long 6'11", Kendall. He didn't even leave his feet to block that shot. Young to the bucket and scoops it in off glass. He's a slasher. He's not a great three-point shooter. Only shooting 9% on the year and still averaging close to 20 points a game. So you know he can get to the bucket. He can beat you off the bounce in multiple ways. He actually prefers to shoot off the dribble, maybe more than the catch and shoot. Rebounds, skied by Trap. Charlotte is in no hurry. Again, this is a team that wants to control the tempo tonight. Young rises for two against a shooter's roll. And we're seeing his game right there. Last possession, getting to the rim and right there, the mid-range game. He, like I said, he, he's very crafty with the ball. Not exceptionally quick, not exceptionally strong, just real smart with the basketball. Forrest looking for the lob back door. This is a uber-athletic Appalachian State team. 
Xavion Brown that you'll see come off the bench for the Mountaineers might have the best vertical in the Sun Belt tonight. He is a highlight reel, has not entered the game yet. Shot clock at three. Almonese rises, Rainbow J. Great defense by the 49ers. Mountaineers never really probed the ball into the three-point area. They've got to be, they've got, they were patient, but they did not attack with the dribble. Jameer Young, All-Conference USA, first team selection last year. Here he is, number one in green. Can beat you off the bounce. Second time tonight that he's gotten right around his man, John, for two. Yeah, Michael Almonese, he he's going to have to back up off of him a little bit, give him a little bit of room, make him prove he can make that three-point shot. That is an 8-0 run to answer the 7-0 start by the Mountaineers. Charlotte has settled in here early in the first half. Well, I love it, Kendall. Both these teams are just really digging in on defense. Ron Sanchez, Tony Bennett, disciple. They will pride themselves on the pack line defense. Forrest off balance, short again. Here comes Austin Butler. Clyde Trapp from NBA range, you bet. My goodness, 11 straight for the Charlotte 49ers. They've settled in. They're really seeing the basket well. Trap 37% on threes, and I'm going to tell you what, that was a very good-looking shot. Big game for both teams tonight. They recruit a lot of the same players on the recruiting trail. Almonese trying to feed it inside. Young, quick hands. He takes it away. Charlotte, four on two. Thank you. My goodness. What a finish. Elevator and foul. Wow. I didn't see that one coming. 13-7. The flush and the foul. Charlotte out in front. Jameer Young, player to watch tonight for the Charlotte 49ers. This guy leads them in points, rebounds, and assists. Look at what he's doing so far through two games. Charlotte's two victories this year have come against Monmouth and USC Upstate. This is by far their toughest test tonight in Appalachian State. Well, they scrimmaged Georgia in SEC school, which gave them a little bit of a taste. But yeah, this is this is a whole different ball game versus the you know the two teams that they played previously. Kendall, this this is a step up for them, and they've answered the call. Well, they're getting ready to head to the Baja Mar Hoops Nassau Championship next week. C.J. Huntley from downtown. Now that was a better possession by the Mountaineers. They actually tried to attack the lane and uh, they got a good looking three instead of a rush three at the end of the shot clock. Jackson Threadgill had that monster dunk and foul right before the timeout. And he had a mismatch with uh, Michael Almonese inside and I would have liked to see him post up that situation. Here's Butler. Slides, lost his footing, and he stepped on the baseline. It's going back to the Mountaineers. I tell you what, this kid Butler, he just he's got one speed, and that's wide open, and a lot of experience from Holy Cross with over 100 starts there, and he's bringing an element to this Charlotte team, toughness that they haven't had in the past. Charlotte's on a 13-0 run the last four minutes of this ball game. App State jumped out to a 7-0 start. Here's Xavion Brown, bucket. Gets it to roll. And that's what I want to see. Attack the basket, attack the rim, attack those gaps because there aren't going to be a lot of gaps against Charlotte. So when you see one, you have to attack it. Charlotte is a fundamentally sound defensive ball club. You would expect that out of Ron Sanchez, a Tony Bennett disciple from Virginia. Shot clock's at 10. Young kicks it. Butler sets his feet. And I like that adjustment by Dustin Kearns putting Xavion Brown on uh, Jameer Young. That's a much more favorable matchup with the uber athletic Xavion Brown and his length. He's got the he's got a six foot seven, six foot eight wingspan to go with that athleticism. Turnover on the lead feed a little too long. Four-point Charlotte lead. Jameer Young with the basketball and Xavion Brown, the best athlete on the team for App State, has the assignment on Young right now. Here's the kick. Trap 
the shot fake. Terrence Harkin, excellent closeout. Here's Young again. Can he get by the quicker Xavion Brown? Turnaround in the lane and a wild shot. Rebound pulled down by the Mountaineers. He's having to work a lot harder, Mr. Young, against Xavion Brown. Nice move from Xavion Brown to get to the bucket and finish. Well, I tell you what, he had a coming out party last week, and uh, he's come to play again tonight. Two-point game here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Vasic bounces it down low. Garcia, turn around. Long, Huntley the rebound. Terrence Harkum, the freshman in the Good game. Pass. And this one ripped away from Huntley underneath. Crowd thought there was a foul. Here's Young. He'll kick it. Young again lines it up from three and cashes in. Over the top of the outstretched arm of Xavion Brown. Harkum surveys the floor. Forrest, the shot flake. Up and under, nice move for Forrest. A lot of contact, a lot of contact on that. Maybe should have gotten to the free throw line for an and one situation. Officials are letting them play. They're playing on both ends though. Trap gives way to Jameer Young. Oh, nice fake. Looking to throw it down that time. Contact and no whistle. Huntley took a shot, and the Mountaineers only have four in the front court. Eads cashes in anyway. Michael Eads is on a hot streak shooting threes. We are tied at 16. What a fake by Garcia that time to get to the bucket, and Huntley enough to alter the shot. Young from the corner. He is on fire right now. And Xavion Brown kind of got caught ball watching right there, took his eye off of him. And uh, he's, he can't allow the young to get going like that. He could fill the score sheet up in a hurry. Justin Forrest surveys the floor. Slow developing play for the Mountaineers. And an offensive foul. It's a moving screen on Justin Forrest. You got to tip your hat to Jameer Young. He tried to go through the screen. And, and you know what? A lot of coaches. Four, 10 Conference USA wins. You see it two years ago. That was the most for Charlotte since 2006. Last year was a tough year. 9 and 16, 5 and 11. And he decided to go heavy in the transfer portal. He is a Tony Bennett disciple. And the longtime assistant coach under Bennett was a part of that national championship team a few years ago with the Virginia Cavaliers. And a bullet pass thrown out of bounds by the 49ers. Ron Sanchez has got a lot of length out there right now on defense. Michael Almonese with the basketball right now for the Mountaineers. Xavion Brown back on the bench for App State. Justin Forrest got called for his first foul, a moving screen before the media timeout. Almonese elevates and gets it to drop. Not settling for threes. They've got to continue to attack that defense. That was a good possession. Ali Khalifa holds out front. Fly trap gets it right back to him. Khalifa. Going to work on the glass. And R.J. Duhart was able to alter the shot inside. Gregory spinning, kicking, Duhart launching. And this, this crowd was ready to explode if that one would have dropped. Here's a takeaway. Numbers for the Mountaineers. Almonese high off the glass. And that's not what Dustin Kearns wanted in transition. They had the numbers there. Here's the kick. Open look for Threadgill, and he buries it. Charlotte makes the Mountaineers pay on the other end. A lot of times you get a bad shot in transition. The other team gets a good shot on the other end. That's exactly what just happened. 
Justin Forrest from deep. And long on the three. This one tapped out. Threadgill, he's got bunnies. Look out to the bucket and finishes. We've already seen the hops from Jackson Threadgill earlier. That time he just finishes it with the right hand. Young man's off to a good start tonight. Hadn't shot the ball well coming into tonight, and maybe that dunk kind of broke things out for him. Looks very relaxed and very aggressive. Delf spinning. He'll kick. Catch and shoot from Forrest. Long on the three. It's Justin Forrest, John, 0 of 4 from downtown. Well, he's going to keep shooting because they're going to need him tonight to score. He's had rough starts in the past and, and you know, missing four in a row. He can turn around and make five in a row. Trap might have traveled. He kicks it out for three. And Vasic was long on the three ball. Delph attacks and finishes. Got to stop the basketball. First thing in transition, stop the basketball. Ron Sanchez not happy at all. Khalifa. You're going to see Khalifa staying around that elbow area. Heck of a passer. Vasic again. Hits this time. Khalifa. Here, here's a guy in Vasic that had a big game against the Mountaineers last year, two years ago in this building, John. He's having a, he's having a hard time getting on the floor with all the transfers coming in and the influx of talent. But, the, but his ability to shoot the basketball is still there. Gregory couldn't finish on the cut inside. Tell you, there is a big crowd in this building tonight, especially in the student section. App State had their largest crowd since 2011 on Friday night in their win against ETSU. They were hoping to top that tonight. Turnaround in the paint, good for Khalifa. And the 6'11 forward is going to work right now for the Charlotte 49ers. Their largest lead of the game with the 531 mark of the, for the Mountaineers, first time in 20 years. And then he took a Presbyterian program out of the Big South to 20 wins before he took the job in Boone. Justin Kearns has this Appalachian State team at the top of the Sun Belt and has everybody's respect in the league now, a program that had been at the bottom of the conference is now a fear on everyone's schedule, and especially with the talent that he returns from last year's. One of the only teams in the country that returned over 90% of their scoring and almost 90% of their minutes last year. Robert Braswell with the basketball. Been really impressed with how Charlotte moves the basketball. Young fires from deep. App State really needs a bucket right here. Trailing by nine, the largest lead of the game for either team. App State had a 7-0 start to this ball game. Charlotte answered with 13 straight. Offensive board, James Lewis, nice move. May have gotten fouled, but he finished it through contact. Yeah, he had to come out early in the game with a foul. It's something Dustin Kearns does. You pick up the first foul, you got to sit down and watch for a while. He's back out there. I'm looking for him to make an impact. Young being pressured by Xavion Brown. Long three, good from Garcia. Jared Garcia, the sophomore from Houston. Showing off the range. That's his first three of the year, but I'm going to tell you that solid back screen to, on uh, Xavion Brown forced, forced um, James Lewis Jr. to help, which gave him that open look. Delph misfires from three. This is the third straight home game for Appalachian State tonight. Braswell, he'll fire, connects again. It is raining threes. For the 49ers right now, their seventh make from distance. Well, the Mountaineers got to look a little bit closer at the scouting report. This kid, Robert Braswell, 72% field goal, 66% from three on the year. And Almonese answers with a three of his own. Well, this is the first 2-0 start for the Charlotte 49ers since the 16-17 season. 
Nice cut back door and a great feed. Butler to Threadgill for two. Some Princeton's off, Princeton offense principles Charlotte uses. Don't use them a lot. They like the space, but when you're making threes, that opens up that back door cut. Adrian Delph, he'll kick it out. All modesty again lets it fly. This one tapped around. James Lewis Jr. Charlotte wants to travel. And whistles come in. A timeout is being rewarded to the Mountaineers at the 238 mark of the first half. 37-25 here in the high country. We'll be right back on ESPN Plus. Fortieth all-time meeting between these two teams, Charlotte and App State. You see, Charlotte has the 24-15 advantage in the series, but App's won the last two, the last two seasons. And a shot clock violation on the Mountaineers. It didn't draw iron, so this is going back to the 49ers out of bounds and a 12-point lead, their largest of the game. John, what do you want to see here defensively from App State? Well, they got they got to be a glove. They got to all work together. It seems like one guy's breaking down every possession, and that's giving up the easy shot to the 49ers. They got to get back like they were working in the first two or three minutes of the game. Khalifa, nice move inside. He can't finish. And the rebound pulled down by Almonese. Give and go to this time to Brown, who skies and finishes it for two more. I, I think that's something they need to do is get more into transition and attack the basketball. You know, they've got to attack the basket and, and get up before the Mountaineers can get their half-court defense set up. App State is a team that we talked about how athletic they are. This season, they have been at their best when they get out in transition, like that right there. And Khalifa, he'll kick it, extra pass, Braswell for three. In and out. Butler, an offensive board, and sticks it right back. When you spread the floor like they do on offense, it allows a lot of lanes if you don't box out on the backside to get to the offensive glass. Delph runs into his own man in Brown, and a turnover. That's the Mountaineers' sixth turnover of the contest. Khalifa looking for the give and go. Lots of ball screens and cutters in the Charlotte offense. You'll notice that tonight. Tons of movement in Ron Sanchez's offense. Khalifa catches and fires in and out again. And a nice tap out Eads as Gregory tracks down the loose board. Coast to coast, he finishes. And Donovan Gregory needs to do more of that. He is a guard playing in a in a forwards body, that's the role that the Mountaineers have for him, but he is one of those guys that can take the ball off the rim and go coast to coast. And it looked like Jackson Threadgill took a shot to the face area as Gregory went up there. He kind of had to walk off a little bit, but appears to be okay for Charlotte. And Donovan Gregory, a chance to complete a three-point play. This guy, one of four at the foul line this year. And he gets the shooter's roll. With 45 seconds left on the clock, Mountaineers need a big stop right here and go down and try to dig into this lead a little bit more before the end of the half. 40 seconds remaining in the first half. Kendall Lewis and John Reister here with you on ESPN+. Plus. The 2-0 Charlotte 49ers trying to stay unbeaten. Here's the skip. Young fires, hits again. Jameer Young, 15 first-half points for the 49ers. And for a guy that came in only making one three over the course of the first two games, he's sure lighting it up tonight. Lead is back to 12 for Charlotte. Justin Forrest with the shot clock dead and seven makes his move. Redgill, quick hands, loose ball, Forrest to Eads with one. And the first half comes to a close. 12 points, Charlotte lead, 42 to 30. We'll take a break. We've got plenty coming on ESPN Plus in our halftime segment.
42-30, a 12-point Charlotte 49ers lead. Kendall Lewis and John Reister here with you as we come back on ESPN Plus tonight. We're glad you're tuned in with us from wherever you may be. Charlotte has their largest, has matched their largest lead of the first half. We'll take a look at the first half stats and numbers. And a big reason why they are doing that, John, is they are 53% 8 of 15 from downtown in the first half. How about Ron Sanchez's crew? Well, I tell you, I mean, it's it's not because the Mountaineers aren't playing good defense. It's the ball movement that Charlotte's having around the perimeter, and they're getting it to the high post. And then Khalif is such a great passer. He's finding guys on the baseline, and the corner's wide open as the Mountaineers extend up. But, yeah, for a team coming in with a very poor shooting percentage, they're absolutely lighting it up. And something that, not on the graphic there, but – we had touched on it off air was the points off turnovers tonight. App does have seven of their 30 off turnovers, but they've been at their best, it seems like, this year when they're able to get out into transition, especially off those live ball turnovers. Well, when you're playing a team that's playing the pack line, that's a great defensive team that makes you work for everything, you've got to take your opportunities when you have them. Towards the end of the half, the Mountaineers did do that some but they've got to do it more often. They're working way too hard, deep in the shot clock, when Charlotte gets their defensive set. See, the battle of the glass has been a good one. 16-15 tonight. When we come back, we will show you some highlights from both teams in the first half. It's been a good one here tonight on ESPN Plus. 42-30, Charlotte leads. It's a 12-point Charlotte lead. Kendall Lewis, John Reister with you on ESPN Plus tonight. Let's take a look at the highlights from the first half for these two teams. Charlotte, eight triples. And that guy right there, a big part of it. Clyde Trapp knocking that one down. But really, Jameer Young, number one in green, three of four from downtown in the first half. And when he gets those feet set, John, he is deadly. Yeah, and I'm sure that uh, Dustin Kearns is, is talking to his guys right now saying, hey, we got to do a better job of knowing where he is. Uh, got to change the scout a little bit on him. But uh, you had some other guys come off the bench and make some big shots. They just, uh, they've done a good job of moving the ball, and that's going to give you quality shots. Well, it was back and forth. Remember, App State jumped out to a 7-0 start to this game and then 13 unanswered points by the Charlotte 49ers. And then midway through the first half is really where Charlotte opened it up. The Mountaineers in that first half from three-point land, three of 13. That's the difference maker right now. Charlotte with eight made triples in the first half. App State a little bit cold from deep in the first half. So we'll see if App State cleans that up and the adjustments that Dustin Kearns will make here in the second half. And for Charlotte, as we told you, trying to stay unbeaten would be their first 3-0 start since the 2016-17 season if they're able to complete the victory tonight in Boone. Yeah, the snipers for Appalachian State, Almonese, Forrest, and Delva combined two for nine. I don't anticipate them staying that cold in the second half. They can get back in this game in a hurry if they get some quality shots, but uh, you know they're going to have to do a better job of covering the shooters for Charlotte on the perimeter to get back in this ballgame. It's 42-30. One more break. We've got the second half on the way from Boone. We come back to you inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Here's a look at the Conference USA preseason poll, at least the top seven in the conference. Charlotte was picked to finish seventh in the Conference USA preseason poll. One thing about it, John, is – the old saying, defense travels, especially on road games. I think the way that Charlotte defends, they're going to be much better than that. Well, they're going to be in every ball game. And then you look at the influx of offensive talent that they brought in with transfers. You know, you, you got to think maybe they were a little underestimated. You know, they're making a statement tonight. If they can hold on and, and get a big win up here, I think it's going to open up some eyes in that conference. And maybe people are going to say, well, you know, maybe we didn't give enough credit going into the season. Well, this is a team that only went 5-11 and 11 in Conference USA last year, but virtually a new roster when you talk about 
all the transfers and how Ron Sanchez utilized the transfer portal. Let's look at the Sun Belt preseason poll. In Appalachian State, picked to finish fourth this year behind Georgia State, Louisiana, and Texas State. Georgia State, a top 10 team in the mid-major top 25 poll right now. Rob Lanier, the head coach for the Panthers, will be another tough team to deal with this year in the Sun Belt Conference. Well, and they're another team much like Appalachian State where they've got the majority of their players back. I believe they got all five starters back, a couple all-conference players in there. And, um, you know, they, they fought some COVID issues last year. Yeah. Everybody's healthy now. They got to probably think maybe they got a little cheated a little bit late last year. So they're going to keep coming in. They're going to keep coming at you. And they got a huge tradition at Georgia State. They're used to winning. We talk about a new roster for Charlotte. Let's look at all the newcomers for this team. Just how well did they win in the offseason in the transfer portal? Well, here you go. Ron Sanchez, when you talk about the transfers that he brought in, six scholarship newcomers come in, three Power Five transfers, and I think one of the best of that whole entire bunch, John, is Austin Butler from Holy Cross, a guy that had made 100 starts for the Crusaders before he comes to Charlotte. He's a guy that just brings all the intangibles and the toughness that maybe you're not gonna get with those other high major players, but you're talking about two kids that started multiple games in the ACC, and another kid that's not even playing tonight, uh, Musa Jallo from Ohio State, he's coming off an ankle injury, so they're just gonna continue to get better and stronger as the season goes on. We're underway here inside of this Holmes Convocation Center for the second half. Charlotte with the basketball first, a 12-point lead. Kendall Lewis and John Reister here with you. Raucous environment here in Boone tonight. Ali Khalifa going to work, left it short, gets it back, and he's over the back. That's going against the 49ers. The first team foul of the second half, and it's on Ali Khalifa. The big 6'11", 230-pounder for the 49ers. And he's banging with James Lewis Jr., which Mountaineers didn't get a lot of production out of in the first half. So uh, good defensive stance there by James Lewis Jr. and box out to pick up that foul. Turnover. In transition comes Trap. Young, the Euro. Can he finish in traffic? No. And the Mountaineers, they'll push the pace when the opportunity presents itself. Forrest was 0 for 4 in the first half from deep. Here's Almonese, he'll line it up. And big rebound by Jameer Young, the team's leader in points, rebounds, and assists. Number one in green was three of four from three-point land in the first half. He's got a quick first step to go with that. Butler will launch from deep. And here comes Adrian Delph in the Mountaineers. Adrian Delph was our player to watch tonight for Appalachian State. He turns it over right there. A little bit too casual on the pass. He's got to understand how good that defense is. Threadgill was bumped. Offensive board for Young. And James Lewis Jr. makes him eat it. Last touch by the 49ers. It'll go back to App State. Good job by Adrian Delph staying vertical. Could have picked up a foul. I think that's what Young was trying to do inside. And then James Lewis with the big block on the backside. Michael Almonese, a Sunbelt tournament record 23s in the Mountaineers' magical four-day run last year. Delph lowers the shoulder. It's an offensive foul. Crowd's not happy about that. Don't know if he had the feet set. Adrian throwing the off handoff. That's uh, going to be called most of the time. Cannot throw that arm out in penetration. Clyde Trapp brings it into the front court for Charlotte. Showed you all those transfers on that graphic before we started the second half. Nobody has scored two minutes into the second half. Butler trying to feed Trapp. He's got the size advantage Ooh, of the I post. Think he got away with a walk. Young with five on the shot clock. Dancing around the top. Launches off pallets. Shot clock violation. Well, the Mountaineers on that defensive stance there were invested in getting after it, and the crowd shouting their appreciation for it. Now they got to take care of the basketball and get a quality shot in this possession. Great stand by Dustin Kearns' group right there. 
Can that shift the momentum? Remember, App State scored the opening seven points of this ball game tonight. Charlotte answered with 13 to come right back. We were back and forth until about the midway point of the first half. Spinning, Gregory, off balance, draws the contacts. And that's one of the mismatches that Appalachian can take advantage of, is, is hard-nosed as uh, the defenders are for Charlotte. They don't have a matchup for Donovan Gregory. He's too quick, he's too strong. I'd like to see him continue to go to the basket. Donovan Gregory at the free throw line. There was a combined three free throws attempted in the first half. We'll take a look at the contact here. Austin Butler did a good job. Everything you could ask him to do, Donovan Gregory's just too strong. Xavion Brown checks in for the first time tonight. Tell you what, Dustin Kearns can really mix and match in that backcourt, can he? When you talk about Delph, Almonese, Forrest, and Xavion Brown, who is probably the best athlete on the team and maybe the most athletic kid in the Sunbelt Conference. Ali Khalifa flashes high. Trap got Forrest in the air. Inside of Khalifa again. Mismatch, back to Threadgill, bucket and the foul. Jackson Threadgill, a chance to complete a three-point play. This, this kid's doing a little bit of everything. Knocked down a couple threes early in the game. And uh, one thing the Mountaineers are doing, they're finding the mismatch. Nothing Mal Michael Almonese at six foot can do with the six foot six. Threadgill that close and that deep to the basket. Jackson Threadgill is a kid that 63% of his shots came from three last year, but tonight we've seen him beat the Mountaineers off the bounce a few times. He's become more of a complete player, and I'm sure you attribute that to a lot of hard work in the offseason. Xavion looking for the baseline, and Threadgill closes the gap off. Eads can't connect from deep. Largest lead of the game for Charlotte. Butler, he'll kick it out. Nice Give look. and go to Trap, and the transfer from Clemson catches and lays it in. And the Mountaineers are chasing, coming off that high screen, and Khalifa's, golly, I've been impressed with his ability to find the open man, and he put that ball right where only Clyde Trap could get it and put it up on, into the basket. Charlotte's so tough to erase a deficit from because of how good they defend in the half court. Brown sealed off by Young. Forrest connects from three. He's a guy that could put a lot of points on the board really quick. They're gonna need him to get back in this ball game. He's only got five tonight, only two in the first half. Give and go, back to Young again. Bucket and lays it in. The Mountaineers are gonna have to figure out how to keep that Princeton cut from turning into open layups. Right on cue for Khalifa and Young. Not announced the attendance yet. I'm gonna be curious. They had their largest crowd since 2011 on Friday in their big win over ETSU. And you can see it right there, the student section could be tough to deal with at the free throw line in this second half, but Young makes it look easy. Well, the students are all here and, and they're loud and, and there's a big crowd other places too. They're just not quite as loud. And you know, the Mountaineers have got to do something exciting to get this, this building rocking. That guy right there has got to get going, Justin Forrest. Xavion runs it down. Adrian Delph, Brown and Forrest, all three on the floor at the same time. And that's two in a row from deep for Justin Forrest. Well, but the, here's the thing. I would have liked to see the Mountaineers come out with some full court pressure. They've got to do something different defensively to shake things up. Oh, that's got to be a foul. A steal and a foul, and it's going against Butler. That could almost be an intentional foul, Ken. It looked like he kind of dove at Donovan Gregory's feet. I don't think it was anything flagrant. He was just trying to keep him away from the ball. Get a second look here. We got a good angle here. And trying to dive, you see those two get tangled up. I think that will probably stay a common foul 
on Butler, it will. Nothing, they're not even gonna go over to the table to check that one out. Yeah, from that angle, that looked, that looked like two guys just going after the basketball. Catch and shoot for Forrest. Tell you what, a bit of a heat check there. He'd made the last two. He's got eight points tonight for the Mountaineers. I think you can live with that shot because you gotta get him going. There's the cut again, and Khalifa, how many assists tonight is that for Ali Khalifa? The big 6'11 is a precision passer. Khalifa, six assists for the 6'11, 230 pounder. And that doesn't surprise me. They run their offense through the high post. Everything goes through him, and he really sees the floor and has got tremendous touch with the basketball. There he is altering the shot. Good hustle, though, as Delf tipped it back up. There was a foul, and he'll head to the free throw line. So. You and I were talking about this earlier, right before the timeout, but if you're Appalachian State, it's really an uphill climb here, especially against the Charlotte team that is so sound defensively in the half court. Well, and they're very disciplined on offense, too. They're not going to beat themselves. They're taking time off the clock. They're waiting until the Mountaineers make a mistake in their half court defense, and they're turning it into easy layups. I uh, wouldn't be surprised for you know, Dustin Kearns to maybe give them a different look in the half court because uh, you know the Charlotte's really settled in on the offensive end and they're making it look real easy. Adrian Delph knocks down the first free throw. Senior from Gastonia was a third team all Sun Belt selection last year. Tickles the twine on the second. Jameer Young with the basketball. Loves the ball in his hands, loves this type of atmosphere. And he has thrived tonight. Young with 10 on the shot clock. Butler looking for space, attacks, lays it in and silences the crowd again. Wow, if, that, if that's not a, a grad players, you know, fifth year player move right there. Very calm at the end of the shot clock and, and just getting to the basket. Wow, that was impressive. They fake the handoff to Zavion. Eads will step back on the J. And this is gonna get up and over the backboard and out of bounds. I tell you, the Mountaineers are having to work so hard for every single shot. But they can't get a stop on the defensive end to get into transition. Lead is still 16 for Charlotte. Butler attacks. Nice block. Pinned against the glass by Delph. Almonese, nice spin. Oh, oh rejected that time by Braswell. Huntley inside. Good and the baby hook is good. Well, the Mountaineers haven't given up. I'll give them that. They're, they're playing as hard now as they did the first two minutes of the, of the first half when they made that 7-0 run. They've got to figure out a way to get some stops on the defensive end. You can't make a run without playing defense. Vosic, they left him alone, he can shoot it. Off the mark, over the back from Butler. Textbook box out by Adrian Delph. Mountaineers have got the crowd back in at Kendall. Now they've got to come down here and get a good shot. Nice timeout by Ron Sanchez. He's, he's sensing that the crowd's getting back into the game. Mountaineers are getting a little more spring in their step. 54-40, 12.29 to go. We've got a good one brewing here in Boone. <laughs> Dustin Kearns and the Appalachian State Mountaineers are one of the only teams in the country to return over 90% of their scoring last year. And then how about almost 90% of their minutes as well? That you talk about the continuity that was kept on this roster in a transfer portal, John, last year that featured 3,000 players. Well, that's obviously not the norm. And uh, as a coach, 
it makes life a lot easier. Now you got to give your presentation a little bit differently because it, everybody's heard everything before, but uh, it makes your job easier. And, and now you just got to build on that chemistry they developed and that excitement that they uh, got when they won that conference tournament last year. Forrest thought about the three. He's got the longer thread gill locked up on him. Instead, bullies his way to the rack and just muscles it up for two in the foul. And we talked at the break how Justin Forrest hadn't gotten in the scoring column yet, but he's one of those guys that could go for 20 in the second half. So looks like he's made up his mind that he's going to get the Mountaineers back into this ball game. Justin Forrest at the free throw line to try to complete the three-point play. He's been a two-time all-sun belt selection for the Mountaineers. This guy, right at the 1900 career points mark. He's got an opportunity, and I think he'll get there just fine. They surpassed the 2,000 career points in his career here at Appalachian State. Khalifa, six assists tonight for the big fella. That's moving screen. Yep. Moving screen is called an offensive foul. And App State, this is a big upcoming possession for the Mountaineers. We'll come back with it after the timeout, though. 11.46 to go. How about this student section tonight? They had a, the most in program history since the 2011 season in attendance Friday night. You see 3401, the official number, and I think it might be bigger tonight. It goes all the way up to the top, that student section. Nice dish, Huntley with the jam. Mountaineers can get back into this thing. Got to play tight defense. It's a 10-point game. Young bumped by Almonacy. That's Michael Almonacy's second. And that's the team foul number four on Appalachian State. Jameer Young has been quiet the last several minutes for Charlotte. Dangerous pass and Khalifa Throws it away. Eads to get it to single digits. Got it. Got to keep playing defense. They're back into this thing. Crowd's getting into it again. First time it's been single digits since several minutes before halftime. Khalifa through the hands of Threadgill. How about this trail three for Michael Eads? He's as good a shooter in the Sun Belt as long as he takes his time, gets his feet set. Big possession right here for Dustin Kearns' crew. Eads gives back to Forrest. One thing about it, it doesn't matter if Justin Forrest is off or not. He is a clutch shooter. Here he is from deep. Here we go. Right on cue is Justin Forrest. He's one of those guys, and you hear it all the time. He'll miss his first 10, and then he'll make his next 15. He has no conscience whatsoever. Listen to the crowd here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. And I, and I tell you, Ron Sanchez has got to count on those big time guys that he brought in this year to silence this crowd. They're used to being in an environment like this. I don't know if anybody else on that roster is. Right on my cue, as I said, how clutch of a shooter he is. He struggled the entire first half and buries it. But they got back in it playing defense, Kendall. Two teams that love the pack line and two sound defensive clubs tonight are in a knockdown, drag out fight. Get your popcorn ready. Final 10 minutes of this one's gonna be good. 
Well, and I tell you what, the 49ers have been punched in the face since the first minute of this game, and I'm real interested to see how they're going to respond in this situation because I'm going to tell you, this place is rocking. Student section has been raucous tonight inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Four-point Charlotte lead. They're on a scoring drought of almost four minutes. Forty-niners with the basketball coming out of the timeout. Young really needs a bucket. Inside, they feed Garcia. Crowd wanted to travel, they didn't get it. Back inside the Garcia. Turn around, in and out. Wow, Michael E's giving up 40 pounds and four inches to Garcia. Delph surveys the floor, he'll rise. Got it's it. good. Kendall, I told you they were too good as shooters to stay cold like they were in the first half, and now we're seeing it. App State is on fire. We got a one-point game. Oh, that's got to be a travel. And it is. A travel on the 49ers. And the Mountaineers can take their first lead since they had that 7-0 start in the first half right here. And that was Justin Forrest on the defensive end, reading Braswell's eyes and jumping into that passing lane, causing the travel. Adrian Delph sizes up a defender. Almonese can shoot it. He thought about it. He'll kick. Justin Forrest has that spurt ability, that star power for the Mountaineers. Five on the shot clock. Here's Delph. Off the mark. Clyde Trapp with the basketball. He'll catch and shoot. Off the mark. Boy, Dustin Kearns has got some big minutes out of Michael Eads. Strong rebound right there, battling in there with Garcia. Forrest. This crowd wanted it. Off the mark on the three, and Jameer Young with the basketball. Jameer Young, 15 first half points. He only has three in the second half. Inside, they feed it to Threadgill. The turnaround, no. Scoring drought is over five and a half minutes now for Charlotte. Well, the Mountaineers have just absolutely ratcheted up the intensity on the defensive end. Long scoring drought for the 49ers. All Monacy surveys the floor. Inside, look. Huntley with the jam. Huntley coming up to set the high screen and just slipped it right back down. Garcia turned his head and ended up in a big hammer slam for the Mountaineers. Mountaineers with their first lead since the 7-0 mark in the first half. Active hands. There is nothing easy on the 49ers end of the field uh, of the court now. Mountaineers are playing defense. This is the way they need to play basketball. We'll take a break. 55-54 thanks to the CJ Huntley flush. They're getting forced to blow. One point Mountaineers lead as we come back to you on ESPN Plus. Kendall Lewis and John Reister. Charlotte on a scoring drought of almost six minutes. Here's Khalifa. Gets it to go and finally a bucket for the 49ers. Justin Forrest getting a blow on the bench. Right now so. Who are the Mountaineers going to turn to to get the buckets right here? Again, this is a veteran ball club, App State. Almonese is one of those. Good D by Young as he blocked the shot. 
up the floor this time to Threadgill. Oh, Trap got away with the walk. No, he didn't. Yeah, travel. He shuffled the feet. He didn't like the call at all. Well, and he's pressing a little bit. He came in averaging over 12 points a game. He's only got one bucket tonight, so, you know, with what's going on with this crowd and the excitement in this game, I'm sure he's trying to do a little bit too much right now. Remember, Charlotte is 2-0 on the season, trying to stay unbeaten. They've lost to Appalachian State the last two seasons. Three years in a row, these two clubs have played in the non-conference. Forrest, great shot fake. He'll kick out to Delph. Back in his way in, step back Jay, short, Gregory, the putback. Gregory 6-5 over to 6-11, Khalifa. Nice finish. One point game, just over six to go. And I like this move by Dustin Kearns of putting a very, very rested Donovan Gregory on Young to keep him from getting going. And the crowd doesn't like the no call there as Khalifa stuck it in. Charlotte's bench wanted to flop there. I think that was a good no call by the official. I think so too. And I think they've let him play all night. I think they're just going to continue to let him go today. And tonight, you know, this last three or four minutes of this ball game. Eads hit a big time three earlier for the Mountaineers. Far is short again on the three. One point, 49ers lead. Trap, Good throws steal. it away. Fight for a loose ball. And jump ball, the arrow will give it back to the Mountaineers. I like both players keeping their heads in that situation. Too much you see guys late in the game, high intensity games, they let their emotions get the best of them. Justin Forrest, the two-time all Sun Belt selection, son of James Forrest, controls the rock right now. His father played at Georgia Tech, was a big time player back in the early 90s. Delph. Faces up, seven on the shot clock. Makes his move, finishes through contact. Good decision by Adrian Delft. Get to the rim, attack the basket. Less than five to play here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. And we've got a foul inside. Now I think you might have slipped on something. I think they're gonna wipe the floor up. Good decision by the fish. I think he, I think he saw um, Butler slip on the floor and blew the whistle. You got to like that. Wait a minute. Let's take a look here. Now that's just a slip. Yeah, they blew it dead to wipe the floor up. So no foul. Dustin Kearns wanting an explanation on the sideline. Well, I'm surprised they're letting him sub out in that situation. Usually on an official's timeout like that, you can't sub in. Butler finds a cutting, Young for two. How many times tonight, John, has Charlotte scored on that backdoor cut? Well, and Khalif is good at reading it, and, and uh, it looked like Forrest fell down. Maybe he banged knees with somebody. Young shouldn't have been that wide open. Adrian Delph. Trying to get it to Huntley, who flashed high. Charlotte switches off the ball screen for the Mountaineers. Delft's got all the space and connects again. Good spacing by the Mountaineers, good ball screen. Sixty-two, sixty. And Young stepped out of bounds. Stepped on the baseline. It'll go back to Appalachian State. We've got a two-point game inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. 3.58 to go. Get your popcorn ready. to 62-60. App State with a two-point lead. They came back 
from 17 down earlier in this second half to retake the lead. And right now, they have the basketball out of bounds in front of a raucous environment. Michael Almonese will handle the rock for the Mountaineers. Huntley will launch it from distance. In and, In out. and out. That would have been a big time three that for the Mountaineers. Been. Would have liked to see Donovan Gregory keep the ball on that. He had a mismatch inside. I think he could have got to the front of the rim. Charlotte with a chance to tie or retake the lead. Braswell cuts and climbs the ladder for the jam. Another backside cut by the 49ers. They're, they're so good at that. And Khalifa is the perfect guy to execute it through at the high post. App State right now has all the momentum in front of one of their largest crowds in a decade. Eads lost control and a jump ball tied up by Khalifa. It'll go back to the 49ers. Got a, got a little bit of a hurry, Mike. Spaced out a little bit, let the action happen in front of him. Jameer Young, only five points in the second half. He had 15 of his 20 in the first half for Charlotte with three made threes. Butler lost control, couldn't lasso the pass. And another jump ball will go back to the Mountaineers. Take a look at that pass, not exactly where Butler thought. He thought it would have been more beyond the key and just right through the hands. The three ball has been the storyline for the Mountaineers in the second half. It really came alive. Only three made threes. They've got six makes from downtown in the second half. And a turnover picked up by Braswell. Up ahead, Young reverses it, and Braswell's there to clean it up for two. That's a quick four points for Braswell in the last minute off the bench for the 49ers. Charlotte with the lead again. Back and forth we go. 2.15 left to get play in the Holmes Convocation Center. Kendall Lewis and John Reister here with you. Almonese backs it out with 10 on the shot clock. Trap eases forward. Almonese again gives way. Gregory. That was a good look from Donovan Gregory, just didn't fall. Young gave it up to Butler. Shot clock to 10. Young gets it back. He'll step back on the three. Off the mark. Adrian Dell for the rebound. Forrest attacking, slicing up the D. And he draws the contact. There's a foul against the 49ers. And Forrest has two free throws to tie the game. He's the guy that the uh, Mountaineers won at the line. Numerous times over the course of his career, he's been in this position. Let's take a look. Forrest appears to be shaken up after the foul. Well, I can tell you one thing. They'd have to cut his leg off to get him out of this ball game. He is a tough kid. As we told you, the son of James Forrest that played at Georgia Tech, hit a game winner in the early 90s in the NCAA tournament to knock off UNLV. Kendall, this kid's money at the line late in the game. I'll tell you what, and it doesn't matter the night that he had. We go back to the first half. He really struggled, only two points. But when he hit that deep three, as he misses the second, Gregory gets an offensive board. Mountaineers can take the lead. Almonese was sizing up the taller Khalifa. And at, Dustin Kearns wants to talk about it with a minute 10 left to go. All 
All right, John, what do you draw up here if you're App State trailing by one with the basketball? Well, you got to talk both offense and defense. You got to get a good shot. I think you got to put the ball in Justin Forrest's hands and, uh, you know, maybe get the ball in the middle of the floor to Donovan Gregory. He's fresh. Uh, he's a very good free throw shooter. He can get to the rim anytime he wants. But then when they score, if they don't score, they got to know the situation. You know, they're going to be down one if they don't score. They're going to be up one if they do. And you got to talk about the other end, especially those back cuts, which has been killing them all, all night. Basketball out of bounds for Appalachian State. Mountaineers got to realize they only have nine seconds on the shot clock, too. Gregory, the Swiss Army knife with the ball. Five on the shot clock. Forrest has to heave. He was fouled shooting the three. And I was blocked off of that, Kendall. I didn't see what happened. But, boy, I tell you, Clyde Trapp's not real happy about it. Let's get a second look. On the foul, shooting the three. Let's take a look. I don't know about that one. Uh, unless he got him on the way up on that left elbow. I mean, the official was right there. He couldn't have been in any better position to see the, see the play. Well, this is a veteran officiating crew with Anthony Jordan, Jason Baker, and Vladimir Voyard Todal our crew tonight. And Forrest makes the first two to give App State the lead. He's got one more left. Dustin Kearns has been in some really good games in his three years at the helm here at Appalachian State. Forrest again, he's been cash money the second half. And the Mountaineers have really got to guard the three-point line. Khalifa is the only one that's not a pure three-point shooter that's out there on the floor for the 49ers. Young from the corner. It's good. Jameer Young showing why he's one of the best that Conference USA has to offer. <laughs> Been quiet the entire second half. And it makes the big bucket at the end. Forrest wants the rock in his hands down the stretch. Lost the handle there momentarily. Pulled away by Gregory. And they'll get it back to Forrest. He's got the taller Khalifa. Six on the shot clock. He's feeling it. And it's short. Rebound off to Khalifa. Charlotte with it. The shot clock is dead, so the Mountaineers are going to foul. And they just fouled an 87% free throw shooter in Jameer Young. How about, how about that matchup with Ali Khalifa guarding the much smaller Forrest? Boy, Khalifa, only a red shirt freshman. He's done so many great things tonight. And the 49ers are not in the bonus yet. Mountaineer is going to foul again. They hack Butler. Yeah, a couple to give here, so some time is going off the clock for Dustin Kearns and the Mountaineers. Yeah, they got to foul quick. It doesn't matter who they get this time, but then they got to be real smart with who they foul to send to the line on the seventh foul. 19.8 seconds remaining here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Young fouled. Xavion Brown was trying to lure him to the sideline for that trap that we saw come in. Again, right idea by the Mountaineers there because, okay, you let two seconds go off the clock, but, you know, maybe you think Justin Forrest coming in from the backside might come away with a steal there. And here comes the one and one for Jameer Young. Young is a guy that is a 87 and a half percent free throw shooter. Charlotte leads Conference USA in free throw shooting through two games. And he's staring right into that student section. And he missed it. 
Justin Forrest dribbles it into the front court and a timeout, Dustin Kearns. Good timeout. All you need is a bucket here, Kendall. All you need is a bucket. Don't need a three. 11 got, seconds left. And I got a feeling whose hands the ball is going to be in. His name's <laughs> Justin Forrest. I don't know if there's a question about it. And I think everyone in this arena thinks the same thing. What do you do here if you're Dustin Kearns? Well, I mean, if you're Dustin Kearns, you practice this every day. Every good coach practices late game situations, so the players know what to do. He's not drawing up anything that they're not familiar with. I think the big question is, is what do you do if you're Ron Sanchez? You know, um, you, don't, you don't want to give up an easy bucket. You got a lot of length defensively. You've done a great job playing defense the entire game. And um, I mean, what do you do? Do you put two guys on Justin Forrest, keep the ball out of his hands, and you're gonna free somebody else up? And how early do you shoot it right here to try to get an offensive rebound after a miss? You gotta shoot it with at least three to four seconds on the clock, which allows for the ball to be batted around a little bit. And if it does come down, you still got a chance to get it up again. 67, 66, Charlotte leads by one in front of the largest crowd in a decade, 3,234. Second largest crowd in a decade, I should say. 3,400 on Friday night for the Mountaineers. Well, and another thing that Shaw's gotta be careful of is you don't wanna foul in this situation because you do have a one point lead. You are ahead in the game. Here we go, 11 seconds, the inbound to Forrest. He keeps, puts it up, Hangs on the rim, rebound, a fight for the loose ball, and Young has it. Mountaineers foul him with two seconds left. Justin Forrest thought he was clobbered at the rim, and he's shaking up on the floor. I'd like to see a replay of that. I, I, we can't really, didn't have an angle to see any contact from where we're sitting, Kendall, so um, you gotta trust that the officials made the right call. And Justin Forrest. And he suffered from cramps against Iona the first game, and it looks like he might be having a little bit of that issue right now. Well, you hope it's nothing worse than that. Let's take a second look. Did Khalifa go straight up? It looked like his arms came down to me. That should have been a foul. No call. Officials said play on. So you still have 2.1 seconds left. And this crowd really letting the officials know about it. Well, regardless of what happens here, even if he makes both of them, the Mountaineers can still get a good shot. And Jameer Young is one of two. He missed a big free throw a while ago. And they're not in the double bonus. He's got to make this first one. Missed it. Two seconds, Gregory, the heave! Oh, and it's long. Charlotte survives on the road, and the 49ers are 3-0 for the first time since 2016-2017. Wow, what a game, Kendall. What a game, what a treat tonight to be able to watch these two teams slug it out like they did. 67. 66, Jameer Young, 23 points on nine of 14 shooting and four of six from three is enough for Charlotte to hang on in what once was a 17 point second half lead. Well, and that's what the Mountaineers are gonna talk about in the locker room about how they came back against a very good Charlotte team. You know, they're, they're pretty much left for dead when they were down 17, they came back out and they uh, battled back, took the lead. You know, a couple things happened late in the game. It could have gone either way, but you got you to tip your hat to them. You know, they, they came back and made this ball game and had a chance to win at the end. A quality, classic college basketball game in Boone, North Carolina tonight. And one thing's for certain, these two teams are going to be tough to deal with in their respective conferences. Charlotte's 3-0 heading to the Bahamas for a holiday Thanksgiving tournament next week. And Appalachian State, they fall to two and two on the year. 
They're heading to Florida for a Thanksgiving tournament. They've got Delaware on Monday night starting things off. Final score once again, 67-66. Charlotte makes six of their last eight shots. And how about this? No made baskets for Appalachian State in the final 413 of this ball game, as hot as they were in the middle port well, of they the got, second half. Yeah, and they got to the free throw line and made a bunch there. But, uh, you know, they, they shot themselves back into it. They've made some great defensive stands at the end to get, you know, you can't make a run without playing defense. And, you know, they got beat by a good Charlotte team who really uh, came together at the end to win this ball game. For Kendall Lewis, John Reister, and the rest of our production crew, this has been a presentation of ESPN to view this game in its entirety or other games streaming on the ESPN family of networks. Be sure to visit the ESPN.